Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Corley. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so much for being here. And now it's time to get started. If you're looking for a space to navigate life's light and dark moments, I invite you to download my app, Affirm It. It's an app I crafted to help you create your spiritual practice because I know how hard it can be to manage your energy throughout all the different things life throws at us. So we celebrate the light and the dark. We're not asking you to be positive all the time. We're super, super raw, super real and welcoming to all the feelings. And so inside of the app, I've created a ton of intentional features to help you with your spirituality. We have daily affirmations to help you stay consistent on your journey. We have guides, practices, and journaling to help you with the self-improvement. And we have guided meditations and visualizations to help you deepen your practice and connect to yourself. One of my favorite things that I've created for the app is actually guided affirmations. So it's something you listen to. It helps you effortlessly reprogram your limiting beliefs. So I invite you to download the app today. It's only $4.49 a month and even less if you do our annual plan. Head to the show notes to download it on your phone today. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Affirmation Addict podcast. I'm so sorry. My voice is a little raspier than usual, so I hope it's not annoying to listen to. Um, But today's episode is all about abundance. So a few weeks ago, I shared an episode with you guys about the different versions of self-love based on your manifestation archetype. And today I wanted to share about the different versions and different ways you can cultivate abundance based on your manifestation archetype. Because I know, and I'm right there with you, where abundance and money and that feeling of freedom is something that is so high on our list for all of us to manifest more of and connect to on a deeper level. And so today, if you've tried certain things, if you've tried certain money affirmations, if you've tried certain visualizations and meditations and you feel like something is still missing, um, maybe you realize you do feel a little bit better, but you need something a little more honed in. I want to give you some tips based on your manifestation archetype. Now, if you have no idea what your manifestation archetype is, I've created a quiz based on all of you. So out of my community and my audience, I feel like we have a large representation of people. Um, So we created four different archetypes because manifestation, spiritual is never going to look the same for anybody. So we figured out and we created four different personas or archetypes per se based off of our community, our audience, and also our internal team, different stages we've all been through on the journey. So if you don't know your manifestation archetype, you can hit the link in the show notes and you'll find our quiz. It's totally free. It takes two to three minutes um, and you will know your current archetype. One thing to note is your archetype can change. It is flexible to change. So listen to today's episode. And if your archetype isn't resonating with you, take the quiz again and see if a different archetype might be what you're at right now and where your energy level is at. Um, Because your archetypes can go in all directions at all the times because we are energetic energy and energy is always changing, right? So pause here, take the quiz, figure out your archetype. And if not, you're welcome to listen to this episode and work backwards to decode. Then I do encourage you to still take the quiz and see if you are actually right. Because sometimes your archetype is so exactly what you need to hear um, that you're just like, oh, I know my archetype just by listening. So I'm excited to see if these four different versions and ways to cultivate abundance help you and help you on your journey. So please send me a DM on Instagram at 
at Affirmation Addict. And let me know if it resonates with you. Um, I'm so curious. This is something I'm experimenting with. For me, learning about myself through different archetypes and personas is so helpful because I'm able to identify deeper. So I really hope it's the same for you. And I'm really curious if it's the same for you. So thank you for listening to that. So let's go into cultivating abundance. This episode is not going to be like three affirmations for abundance. This episode is really on a deeper level, that missing piece. I absolutely strongly encourage affirmations for abundance. I encourage visualizations and meditations. If you're looking for that, those are inside of my app, Affirm It. If not, if you have already done that and you're already a subscriber and you are already doing your affirmations, but you still feel like there's a little bit of a missing piece, that's what this episode is really going into. Deeper layers for you to work through your abundance journey. So diving right into it, if you are the heart, the heart is a very empathetic archetype. It's very feelings based. So if saying those money affirmations or listening to those visualizations feels like it's getting you somewhere, but not close enough, maybe you've been doing it for a while and you haven't reached your goal, then I encourage you to dive into the feelings. Maybe grab a journal and talk about and write down what does abundance feel like? What does money feel like? What does having a lot of money feel like to you? And most of the time, your first answers will be freedom, security, and that's beautiful. That's a great start. But I want you to dive even deeper. What does it feel like when you're around other people? What does it feel like you can do differently, maybe? What do you think is the difference between where you are and where you want to be if you just had a little bit more money? And if you had that feeling of abundance, describe it in actionable words. Don't just say it feels free but go deeper. Does it feel like you wouldn't worry about walking and stepping on a flight? Is that your ter- personality type? Or maybe it means that you would not worry and you would feel so okay to just take a walk somewhere and go on a shopping spree. I don't really know what it might feel like for you. Um, but be deeper, be more specific into really step into that mode of what does money actually feel like? Like if you had that dream amount sitting right in front of you, what would that feel like for you? And how can you tap into that feeling now? I know that how to tap into it now is something we always say. And one thing to note here is when you're trying to create that feeling of money, that feeling of abundance, it doesn't have to always come from an abundance related thing. Maybe you feel super abundant in, I don't know, when you're cooking in the kitchen because you can buy any ingredient you want. Maybe that really brings you also a sense of freedom and abundance. So amplify that. Cook more. What if cooking more and playing with your fruits and vegetables and produce also was creating more abundance for you? That's possible. Whatever you want to assign meaning to can be and can be your truth. So give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to play and be like, what other areas of my life do I feel similar feelings already? And how can I cultivate that more? Maybe it's when you're traveling. Maybe it's when you're around certain people in your life, like family or friends. Maybe it's when you're around nature. What gives you that feeling that is very similar to that feeling you are creating and looking at, looking forward to with abundance? Now, when it comes to our next archetype, the dreamer, the dreamer, you are my ambitious. You are my powerhouses. You are my fiery love taking action, love doing, love moving forward. And you love seeing that the things that you're doing are moving the needle forward. For you, my suggestion and my intuitive hit right now for the dreamer to cultivate more abundance is I want you to take out that pressure factor. I feel like as the dreamer, you are very motivated by milestones. You are very motivated by hitting a certain number, by hitting a certain key metric, so to speak, in your life. And I invite you to release that pressure because oftentimes as a dreamer, you are so motivated by the numbers. If you're not hitting a certain number, if you're not hitting a certain milestone, 
the feeling of frustration and discouragement is not very far away because you are so motivated by that. So I invite you to release the pressure. I'm not saying don't have a number goal. I'm not saying just ignore that. What I'm asking you to do is release the pressure and separate that hitting a number to your worthiness. Separate that connection. Disassociate your identity and your worthiness in the area of abundance and money, at least for right now. Disassociate that from how worthy you are um, and how enough you are as a person. Because oftentimes we put so much pressure on these numbers because we think when we hit that number, that's going to be like a check mark of, okay, I'm worthy. Okay, I'm enough. So I invite you to take off the pressure. How do you take off the pressure? The biggest way is to say, I am worthy regardless of my financial numbers. I am worthy regardless of how much money I make and disassociate your worth um, with that. So those types of affirmations, I think will really, really help you. And just catching yourself. Like if you're noticing yourself stressing or taking pressure, whenever you realize that, whenever, however long it takes, take a second and just pause and be like, okay, I can take a step back. I'm okay to pause. And that is safe for me. So that's my invitation for you. Okay, moving on to the manifestors. So my manifestors, you are in a position where certain things in your life already have manifested. You've gotten some of those big ticket items, so to speak. That's not the right word, but you've gotten some of those higher priority things that most of us have when we start our journeys. Like you might have gotten your soulmate and your dream job, but you might might not be making as much money as you feel or something of the sort. Typically, that's what happens when we're manifestors is we have a few big things that put a lot of pressure that feel like those big areas in life, but there's still something missing. And maybe you even do have the dollar amount, but you might not feel abundance on a deep level. So for you, my manifestors, my invitation for you and my reminder for you is you know that After a point, manifestation stops becoming about the physical. You can manifest all of the physical things you want, but until you don't notice how you feel from the inside out, nothing is going to matter. You can have the soulmate, you can have the money, you can have the dream home and still not feel fulfilled from the internal. So for you, my invitation for you is to instead of stop seeking money, seeking that even feeling of abundance, because I think that is such a buzzword now in our minds that we've kind of lost the importance of it um, and for our subconscious minds. So what I invite you to do is I want you to write out all the different things abundance feels like and give yourself an example on what area in your life feels like abundance and how can you create that from the inside out. This is a little similar to the heart actually, um, but for the manifester, I want you to be less specific. The heart, I asked you to be very specific. I wanted you to give yourself hardcore examples of what are those day-to-day items that make you feel free, that make you feel abundant for the manifester, I actually want you to go a little more higher, zoomed out, not as specific. And I want you to think of five to seven feelings that are different from abundance. And one example on how you can feel that every single day, um, because that's going to be your little to-do list. I want you to go through and try and tap out some of those items every single day. So you are consciously being like, okay, I am creating abundance consciously. I am tapping into this feeling because these feelings are what you can create from the inside out at any point. So if you think having more money is just going to simply make you happier, that's okay. That's beautiful. How can you be happy now? I want you to give yourself those examples today because I think you are at a point where even if you do manifest it, something is still going to be missing. Maybe it'll stay, but internally you have to shift as it shows up. So for you, my focus is let's get you shifting on the inside so that you can see it and experience it and appreciate it on the outside. And lastly, my visionary. So visionary is currently where I am at energetically. And my invitation for you, this is coming from me as well. My invitation for you is actually to peel back and look at all of the money 
beliefs, the money projections, the money assumptions, whether it's the way it works, how it flows to you, where it comes from, kind of take inventory of all of your beliefs and look at how many of them are taught, how many of them are coming from other people in your life or movies you might have seen, how many of them are actually your own. Because for you as a visionary, you might not even realize that how much of your programming, even though you've done so much of the inner work, how much of your programming still stems from areas that are not you. So for you, I want you to take inventory of your beliefs, of your current belief systems, your current expectations with money, your current assumptions with money and say, hey, how many of these are mine and how many of these are somebody else's? And when you notice that, ask yourself, do I like it or do I not like it? Do I want my life to operate from this belief or not? And if you don't like it, do the work to reprogram it. And if you do like it, enhance it and acknowledge it and give it love. Because there's a difference between a conscious belief. So we all logically, consciously through this work, every single person listening to this podcast is aware that money is energy and money flows. But subconsciously, do we really, really believe that? My answer to you is if you soulfully on a deep subconscious level believed it, you wouldn't probably be listening to this episode. So if you were here, there is probably a little bit more work to be done. And that's not a bad thing. I think we're all meant to always evolve, including myself. And so give yourself permission to be like, yeah, I do have some more work to do, but this might be more belief-based work and identifying where those beliefs are coming from, whose they are, and do you even like them? Give yourself permission to choose. And whatever you do, I want you to create a list of 10 beliefs about how money works that feel really good to you. They could be your own. They can be borrowed. You can borrow them. If you're inspired, borrow them from me, borrow them from somebody else. But if you're inspired by them, if they align with the direction you want to go is what I'm asking for you. And so that is my invitation for you as the visionary. So I hope after listening to this entire episode, whether you're the heart, the dreamer, the manifester, or the visionary, I hope these little tips will help you on a deeper level cultivate abundance, not just a quick money affirmation, but seriously, in your day-to-day lifestyle, how can you tap into this energy? How can you actually consciously work towards creating abundance for your current energetic archetype, for your current manifestation archetype. So I really, really hope this episode was helpful. And if you need more abundance and manifesting money resources, I have tons for you inside of Affirm It. I have a meditation. I have affirmations. I have sleep affirmations. I have all of the tools. So if you're curious, head into Affirm It. You can explore. You can subscribe. It's less than $5 a month. I know I sound like a broken record, but um, Affirmant is like my spiritual catalog of all the different tools I wish I had for wherever you are on your journey. So whether you're having a good day or a bad day, whether you're feeling super abundant or you want to feel more abundant, there is a tool for you to help you get to that and to help you cultivate that sense of feeling. That's the beauty of Affirmant. And I hope you can check it out. And I hope this podcast episode resonated with you and gave you some tangible tips on how to actually move forward, how to create that feeling of abundance. So can't wait to hear your feedback. Thank you so, so much for all your love. And thank you for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I always get a ton of questions in my DMs from people asking how I can manifest X. The truth is you can really manifest anything as long as it's for the greatest good. And if you're having trouble manifesting something right now, or you feel stuck on your journey, I have a really beautiful resource I've made for you. It's a free quiz. It's called the Manifestation Archetype Quiz. And it's something that I've created so you can find out your manifestation style to give you more clarity on your spiritual journey. After taking the quiz, you're going to receive the best resources for your specific archetype to help you attract your desires based on where you're at and what you want to create. So you can find a link to the quiz in the show notes or just head to my website at www.affirmation-addict.com. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If this episode resonated with you, it would mean the world to me if you can rate and review the podcast and share it on your social media so I know to keep creating episodes that are inspiring you to manifest. I'm so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today and I'd love for you to join the community by following at Affirmation Addict on Instagram. 
To continue diving into spirituality and manifestation, head over to my website, affirmation-addict.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and so much healing energy. Thank you.